dear Lord, I wonder can you save me? I can't die, my boo boo's about to have my baby. <laughs> Man, you already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life, and we're back. Gangs. Gang, gang. All these guys gathering together, you know, doing the fingers and the calls and squatted up and riding down on people. That's common. That's a. Uh, that's prison in a nutshell these days. Remember now, it wasn't always like that. But just like things happen in the streets, well, they make their way into the prisons. And that's what the gangs did. It was something that started out here at one point that actually meant something. They all stood for something. It was to either fight oppression or to fight this or fight that. But they usually had a reason for doing what they did. There was a reason that they even existed. You get into DOC, into the prisons and jails, none of that exists. The whole reason behind it all, the oppression or whatever you want to call it, it's not what it's about no more. These guys have lost sight. Today we're going to get into the truth on these gangs. From the, the racist gangs to gangs of all different natures and what I've personally seen. I tell y'all, it always ends bad. When you're doing bad, you're going to get bad. If you think you're out there pulling the wool over everybody's eyes and that you're doing slick stuff, you're eventually going to get caught. I've been guilty of that. That's what we're on now, man. The truth about the gangs. There's so much. I could talk about this subject right here for weeks to come. I could drop a video every single day because over 90% of the stupidity I've seen take place, 90% of the violence that took place was gang related it can make your time really really hard and if you're not affiliated it can make you really really frustrated that you're constantly paying for the mistakes of everybody else you're already locked up so you're paying for your mistakes your wrongs day in and day out and now because of that little idiot you're constantly locked in the cell because of those morons your people can't come see you this weekend. You can't get on the phone. The TVs are cut off. It's always something going on. Now, before we get started, I do want to make this very clear. Let me put this disclaimer out there. I don't have a problem with none of y'all. Y'all do what y'all do. There are a lot of guys that misrepresent y'all. Things do not run the same in every state. How things run here in Virginia, they're not going to run in New York. How things run in New York, they're not going to run in Cali. How things run in Chicago, and so on and so on and so on It's different according to where you're at But one thing that is the same Is the violence that is associated with the gangs Without further ado, man You know how to see it You know how to live it So Let's relive it I guess we're going to start With the whole Aryan thing it's Something I get questioned about a lot As far as Virginia goes Certain gangs have been around as far as the system goes, for a very long time. When I think back into the introduction of the gangs into the jails and the prisons, I think of number one being the Blood Boys. The Bloods were deep, and they ruled with an iron fist. Violent is an understatement when it comes to how they got down. Then you had your Crip sets, all different sets of Crips who followed right in behind them. Then you had your GDs. Your gangster disciples, your BGDs, black gangster disciples that fell in behind them. And then you got the, we'll just say Spanish gangs that were, when they came in, they were a whole nother caliber. The Norteños, Serenos, you know, the MS-13s. And I know somebody's going to say, hey, that's the same thing as that. I know that. But when they introduced themselves into the system and we really started seeing them flood the systems, that was a game changer. Them dudes were not playing. They wanted you to know that if it was only three of them, them three were capable of very, very bad things and would not hesitate to not only take your life, but catch a life sentence. They didn't care. I said we're going to start with the Aryans, and that's because when they came into the system, it just caused chaos for everybody. If you were a white dude at that time and you stayed to yourself, 
They were trying to attack them, themselves to you. They would come for you, try to recruit you. If you were a solid white dude who wasn't affiliated with anybody, stood on his own ten toes, they'd sit back and watch, and soon enough, they would come and try to recruit you. I watched all this happen. It, like, just started out of nowhere. It went from, it was something that you only heard of on documentaries, on TVs. You heard a lot of it in Texas. You heard a lot of it, you know, coming out of Cali and more West Coast status when it came to the Aryans. It wasn't something I had ever come across here in Virginia. When these dudes first jumped off, it was just a couple of them. I don't know who had the great idea that we have nobody that says we can do this. Nobody's validated us. No one has shown up here and brought us this knowledge. Maybe they read a magazine. Maybe they read a book. But for whatever reason, one day a dude decides, I'm an Aryan and I run this and all these guys in here are gonna fall under me and we're gonna be the Aryan Brotherhood. That is exactly how it went down. It wasn't like a shot caller from out Cali showed up and said, hey, y'all ain't programming, y'all ain't doing things right. Everybody's gonna fall under me and we're gonna get this in order and we're gonna get numbers and we're gonna become a gang. That is not what happened. It was a single person they got the bright idea in his head that I'm white. Here's the truth of the matter. I'd have been beat up several times. Nobody's really got my back. My homeboys and them are kind of soft too. So I'm gonna see if I can start recruiting people. I'm gonna see if I can get the numbers up to where we become an organization that way. If somebody wants to try to mess with me again, well then I have to deal with all these dudes. The problem in that is the guys that they were recruiting. They were recruiting drug addicts. Guys that were sticking needles in their arms. Guys that were smoking their glass pipes. They were recruiting flunkies. Guys that were getting slapped around. Guys that were getting extorted. Guys that had bad charges. They didn't care. All they cared about was getting the numbers. And I watched them grow and grow and grow. From where it went to it was like two or three guys walking to now they're a group of ten. Then they started integrating all these other things into it, not knowing what they were doing. Not knowing that if they tried what they were doing here, if they tried that out in Cali, them boys would take them up out of here. Dudes started getting the swastikas tattooed on them. Dudes started getting lightning bolts tattooed on them. 88, if you don't know what the 88 stands for, check it out. The HH, if you don't know what that stands for, check it out. They started getting all these different gang related tattoos that were race related not knowing what they were doing here these guys are getting these tattoos that in other states you have to earn any of those guys you see out in cali that are walking around with the lightning bolts on them they put in work on somebody they used a knife they went at somebody in a very violent manner to get those tattoos to have the right to wear that here this guy is soft as melted butter running around with a plastic all over them. They had no clue what they were doing. And I honestly feel like this started, all of this started, because when these guys came onto the scene, race-related attacks, assaults, extortion, things like that, were at an all-time high. It's no secret that for the majority of places, especially out this way, I'm not gonna say all, so I'm not, don't get in my comment box with, it ain't like that right here. I'm not talking about you. But for a lot of places on the East Coast, when it comes to prisons, the white guys are at the bottom of the food chain. They're solid guys from every single race. But if you're gonna be honest, I'm always gonna try to be honest to the viewers. There are more guys from other races that are locked up for more serious crimes. A lot of the white guys that were coming in were drug addicts on the streets. They were thieves on the streets. Now there's drug addicts and thieves of all races, but it was common if you asked a white dude, why are you locked up for it to be something drug or alcohol related? With a lot of the other races, there was a lot of robberies. There was a lot of murders. But then again, there was also a lot more of them than there were the white guys. But when it comes to the white guys and the other races, they were just raised different. They were in the streets on a different type of time. This guy's pumping drugs with a pistol. This guy's buying drugs. Doesn't it doesn't take a rocket scientist to say the guy with the pistol that sells drugs is probably more violent than the guy that goes and buys drugs or the guy that's buying drugs would just come take the drugs. 
you also need to understand this. There is strength in numbers, but you don't get to choose that. That all is based on where you're locked up at. And I can prove my theory without a shadow of a doubt. You go to a state where the majority of the prison is black, you are going to be at the bottom of the food chain because you are outnumbered 10 to 1. That is a fact. You go to a state or say you go get locked up in Mexico. Listen to me now. Hear me out. Go get locked up in Mexico as a white man or as a black man and try to tell me that you were in there running everything, that you and your race were running everything. That's a lie. Do you know who's going to be running everything in Mexico? The Mexicans, because they are the majority. You are the minority. At the time, the white guys were the minority. Rather than, you're not going to take nothing from me and stand on your own ten toes, stand on your own two feet, and stand up for yourself. These guys decided to come together. Rather than be solid, I've done it. You don't have to be part of a gang to get your point across. You don't have to be part of a gang to be respected. People respect knowing that you will stand up for yourself. Win, lose, or draw, all that matters is you go in there. If you're called out, go in there. There's going to be times you don't want to go in there. You know before you go in there. You look at this dude and you're like, man, this dude is about to trash me. But if I don't go in there, then everybody that just watched him talk to me any type of way now feels like they can do the same. I might as well bring my commissary bag out here and dump it out. Because after I let him walk over top of me, my new name is going to go from whatever it currently is to little floor mat, to little step on, to step stool. That's who you're going to be, step stool. Everybody's just going to step on you. These guys couldn't, they couldn't grasp the concept of being solid, of just being themselves, of just standing up for themselves. They had to try to build an organization. I guess they felt, if there's a whole bunch of us, won't nobody try it like this? What? Do you know what happens when you put a whole bunch of soft guys together? You have a whole bunch of soft guys together. Putting a whole bunch of guys together doesn't mean that you're now tough. Yes, yeah, some guys are going to feel like, well, I got 20 guys behind me. Yeah, now I can swing off on somebody because they feel like they're not going to get jumped. Or if I start losing, they're going to jump in. When it was the complete opposite. I'd seen white guys jump out there and start getting their ass whooped. The other dudes be like, Start looking off in the space as the homeboys getting drugged. I'd seen dudes run up in the cell on these dudes one on one, shut the door, and the homeboys run up and see who's in there and be like, damn, about to beat Timmy's ass and walk off. Where in other states, it's known you can't move against that group without permission from your group or it's going to start a war. We've all seen the documentaries, we've all seen the, the YouTube videos on this where these dudes were killing shit out west that is not the case here out here they came together and all it did was make them a giant group of targets but they didn't see it that way they wouldn't ultimately see it that way until they had their first war that's what we do out here we war we go against each other when they had their first real jump off their real first feud their real first fight time for violence people have to bleed Aryan brotherhood all this and that it really showed the caliber of the guys they had recruited. Because the majority of the guys ran. Ran in direction of the police. Took off to the guards. Praying to God that the guard would save them. Now their issue at hand wasn't that there wasn't any solid guys to be recruited. There were a lot of solid white dudes. Tons of them that were willing to get down. That would dump with whoever. That had size on them. That really lived that life in the streets that came from them streets. But with everything I just said in the last few seconds, it should tell you why they didn't link up with them. If you were in them streets before coming to prison, you dealt with a lot of different people, a lot of different races. You weren't going to attach yourself to something that was racist. And for the remainder of your bid, be known as a racist. So they could only attack, they could only get the guys that were either victimized or borderline victimized or on the verge or scared or of that caliber. Solid dudes. And they did pick up a handful because these guys knew some of the solid ones they actually did get knew, oh, I could go in there and take over and boss everybody around. I could run that. 
I'm stronger than their leader is. They let me in do it, man. I'll take over all that. So they did have a handful of solid guys. But for the most, for the masses, for all the other dudes that were actually real serious and about that life, they weren't about to click up with these clowns. They're not about to go over there and make all these dudes their brothers knowing that in time of war they're going to run. In due time, I told you on another story, these actual Aryan dudes from out west had shown up there for whatever reason. And they shut all that down, started making them boys cover their tattoos. Told them, if I even so much as hear one of y'all claim to be that, I'm going to do something real bad to you. And in me transitioning from where I was at to the next prison, I watched it start to die off. And then them guys that came in and applied pressure, they got shipped. So then these guys now started to poke their chest out again. They all started to come back into a group. This is where they ultimately failed. It wasn't in the trying to create a gang that they failed. No, that has been done time and time again. That's how gangs start. It's an idea. Somebody gets a couple guys. They expand. They become a gang. It wasn't in the fact of them trying to be a predominantly white gang. That's not where they failed. Where they failed was the racist aspect of it. And automatically making everybody else their enemies. And letting it be known without letting it be known that they were racist. They didn't have to say it. Their tattoos spoke volumes. Little things that other guys would catch when they were ear hustling spoke volumes on who these guys were. Now, with everything I've just said, please keep in mind, I've been out of prison eight years. Eight whole entire years. No trips back. No more lock up for Jay. A lot can change in eight years. For all I know, somebody came in and runs it the way it's supposed to be run. Runs it without it being racist, if that's possible, because the only thing I ever saw from it was the racist aspect of it and them kicking the shit out of each other. I don't know. That is 100% how it was when I was in there. I still talk to people. I talk to people daily, every single day, four to five times a day, four to five different people on the regular I talk to. And I asked, and they're like, yeah, them dudes still running right here. What are they doing? Oh, they're doing the same thing they were doing back then. Is it that way all the way across the state of Virginia? I do not know. I'm not there. I'm just speaking for my time and the individuals I saw and knew they were doing this personally. Ultimately, there would be a white gang that formed. This all happened after I left. With me being out of prison and still talking to people, you hear things. I started to hear about this new gang that was predominantly white, but that was the complete opposite of what these Aryan dudes had going on. A new gang that was white, that was full of solid white guys that weren't running around putting crazy racist things on their body, that weren't whispering racist things behind the scenes, and that was DMI, Dead Man Incorporated. I know some of these dudes. I know guys that came out of the system as DMI, but like I said, all this took place after I left. When I was in there and see any DMIs, I'd never even heard of DMI. It was something I started to hear through guys that were coming out of the system. It was something I started to hear over, you know, telephone conversations, man, this DMI dude, da, 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 da. And as I dug deeper into it, they did exactly what the Aryans did. They came together, except the difference in them was, like I said, it wasn't about racism. It was just about a group of guys uniting, being solid, standing for something. They had principles, morals. I know it sounds crazy when you say gangs and morals in the same sentence, but the gang actually had morals, a code they lived by. They programmed, they worked out, they did all these things that the first group of guys that attempted to do it completely failed at. These DMI guys, I've heard plenty of stories of where they actually went to war and everybody didn't run. I've heard stories of where they went at other gangs and everybody didn't run. I've heard stories of them fighting and it wasn't them beating each other up, which is a very common thing in the gang world. With that first part of this video, and this could be a long video, I had to touch on the Aryan thing, never really got much into it. I don't care what anybody does. If it don't apply, I let it fly. That's what we say in prison. Me per se, my wife is Spanish. My son is half Spanish. My grandson is mixed. I wasn't raised like that. Schools I went to, 
I wasn't raised like that. The neighborhoods I lived in, I wasn't raised like that. To each his own, we all have our beliefs. Do I believe in it? No, I think it's stupid. I think it's a, a played out mentality and that people allow the actions of few to make them feel some type of way towards the mass, towards everybody. If you're watching this, then clearly I put it out. To be honest, I wanted to delete this video. I don't even want to put it out. It's not the stuff I like talking about. Because people, they get all in their feelings. Man, are oh, you talk about me or you're hating on your own race? No, no, no. I'm not hating on my own race. I'm not going to attach myself to stuff that I don't agree with. And I'm going to give it to y'all raw. I'm going to speak the truth. I'm going to speak what I saw. And if you're mad about it, then you might want to handle the dudes in there that are Doing the stuff that are talked about in these stories, not me. I ain't do it. I'm just Jay. Not a gang member. Next up, we're going to get into the, the MS-13s. These guys are a different caliber of gang. Human beings. All together just different from anything we were used to seeing. Now, most of the guys I had met or come across talked to, dealt with, were from Northern Virginia, they were from Washington, Maryland, a lot of guys were coming out of Maryland, coming down here in VA to Northern Virginia, and getting locked up, a large majority of them had very heinous, heinous crimes, terrible acts against other human beings, they had crimes that ranged from the worst of the worst to worst. <laughs> It wasn't like that I met any of these guys that had like driving on suspended or petty charges. Most of these guys were doing double digit sentences, life sentences. And the one thing they all had in common is their constant display of violence. I've never, I could say for a fact, I've never met an MS-13 member that I did not think in one way, shape or another had something wrong up here. Now, I'm not saying that y'all are crazy. I'm saying these dudes were known for doing crazy things. They were not an organization that you've seen people mess with. Most times, and I didn't care what gang it was, if they got into it with these dudes, they would try to figure out a way to fix it before it went to war. They would send somebody over there to straighten the situation. If they got into it with this gang, this gang would violate their own gang member just to stop this from happening. This isn't what we want to do. We're going to go out there with the intent of, you know, going to war. There's going to be some stabbing, some fighting, all these different things that take place in the time of war. These guys are going out there with the intent of killing. They don't care if they get caught. They're not afraid of the electric chair. They're not afraid of the, the death penalty. They're not afraid of the courts. They're not afraid of the judges, lawyers, cops, surveillance footage. Who's seen what? They don't care. When it's time to go, they're going to move. They're going to move right then, right there, unless instructed to do otherwise. I had seen situations where they would find out somebody that was of their race or part of their organization had done something they didn't agree with, and they would go with them. And that set the tone for what they would do to someone else when they would handle one of their own. If they will do that to their man, to their dude, to one of their members. I'm talking, put something all the way in his front that comes all the way out his back and just completely destroy his body. Then what do you think they'll do to you? That was something everybody knew. You never seen these guys pull a knife and not use it. I've seen every gang you can mention or ever think of at some point or another pull a knife and show it. I had never, not once, seen these guys pull a knife and not go use it. At the moment that the knife came out, it was all bad. Somebody was going to get stabbed. They didn't care about the threats of long-term segregation, of being shipped to the higher levels and 23 and 1 and super maxes. They didn't care nothing about that. They didn't care about the prison rules. They would tattoo their faces, and it's against the rules in prison to get your face tattooed. It's against the rule to get against the rules to get tattoos at all. But getting them on your face is gonna show that you just don't care. I had two homeboys, man. I knew a lot of different MS-13s that I met throughout my bids. 
But I had two dudes that I really, really clicked with. Three to be specific, but two more or less, which was Termite and Diablo. Two dudes that I spent a lot of time around throughout my time. A lot of guys, you know, these are guys that I built with over time that I come to find out personal things about. I looked at family photos and back and forth. We talked on the regular. The first time I had an altercation and they were anywhere around would be my introduction to how loyal they were to someone they considered a friend, someone they looked at as a homeboy. If they rocked with you, if they looked at you like, hey, that's my friend, you didn't want to get into any type of beefs with them around. They were going to take it somewhere I didn't want to take it. I'm okay with going in the cell. And if you beat me up, okay, you got me. You beat me up. I lost. They're not going to do that. I remember I get to arguing with dude and Diablo and Termite used to stand at the, on the top rail. And I, I go up there and they, I'm like, dude, thanks. shit, sweet. I'm probably going to take him to the cell. He's like, what's that? It's a problem. It's a problem. And I know instantly when you hear it, it's a problem, B-R-O-L-E-M, problem. It's a problem? I said, nah, it's not, it's not a problem. Oh, it's a problem. They instantly want to stab the man. They want to cut him, slash him, poke him. And now I've got to talk them out of, I'm not even focused on the fight. I'm focused on the, the fact that these dudes are ready to kill this man because we had some words. We're merely just going to go in there and punch on each other and let out some frustration and establish that neither one of us are bitches. No, we no, ain't no punks here. But these dudes didn't want that. They immediately wanted to take it to knife play. They wanted to whip out the swords and start slashing. I literally had to talk them out of not killing someone that I had issue with. Someone they had no issue with. I'm not MS-13 and no way am I associated with MS-13s. We're cool and all. But their loyalty, it showed in those moments. The last thing you ever, ever wanted to do in there was go against one of those guys. Or behind that door, put your hands on one of those guys. And he doesn't have a weapon, but he can get out and tell his brothers and them what happened. Because you're not going to be able to, to get to an officer fast enough. You're not going to be able to get out of that, that pod or that dorm fast enough. They're going to be on you. And it's going to be something like out of one of those movies, man, where everything just swarms in on one, one creature and just murders it. That's what it's going to look like. These dudes displayed violence on a level that none of us were used to seeing. If you've done a lot of time, you've seen somebody get stabbed before. Some people have seen people lose their lives. You've seen people get cut. You've seen blood. You've seen the violence. You've seen people get knocked out and, you know, teeth missing and cuts and bruises are banged up. It's a whole different level of violence when you have a group of men that do not care about anything that are going after one man. And their mission in going at this one man is not to cut him, is not to scar him, is not to show everybody else that, hey, we'll cut you. Their mission is to kill. When that came into the prison, it changed the whole tone. It changed the, the atmosphere the first time it happened. And that, that was put on display for everybody to see. And a lot of the other gang members would always if there was any misunderstanding, they wouldn't let it sit and fester. They wouldn't give these MS-13 dudes time to get together and discuss, all right, let's go kill them. They would immediately, and I mean like, uh, rabbit -o, rabbit -o, go straight over there and address it. Hey, look, we're going to handle homeboy, man. He was out of pocket for what he did. We'll take him in that cell. We're going to beat the shit out of him. We're good, right? Dudes would always squash the beef with these dudes because they didn't want the pressure that these dudes were going to bring. Now, I got to make this clear. When it comes to dealing with these individuals, these guys, they did a lot of things that I would find out. Not Termite and Diablo so much, but other guys in their organization, I would find out about things they did that I didn't agree with. That even Termite, Diablo, and other members of that gang didn't agree with. You got to remember now, these dudes on the streets, Termite said their weapon of choice is a machete. He's like, we keep a machete. We keep a machete in the car. If we're riding a truck, we got one in the truck. If we're at the house, we got one at the house. He's like, we do the machetes. So you take a gang that in the streets has already used these type of weapons. You throw them in prison where the main weapon is a shank. The main weapon is a homemade knife. Something for them to look like a machete. That's common also. I've seen it time and time again. And you put them against other men 
who, this guy just joined the gang. He's 22 years old, fresh in the prison. He ain't never stabbed nobody. He ain't even seen nobody get stabbed yet. And now he's beefing with this guy that has cut people, has chopped people, has hacked people up with a machete. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think that dude is going to do to that guy? That guy's running his mouth. His gang knows. Hey, 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 stop. Stop. Because not just one of them is going to get a weapon. They're all going to get weapons. And they're all coming over here. Yeah, we can fight. Yeah, we got numbers. Yeah, we got weapons. But how many of you are really going to take it to where they're going to take it to? Back to the crimes. Some of these dudes were convicted of killing women. And turn my Diablo be like, look, I really don't know. I don't agree with homeboy and his crimes. They used to call it feeding the beast. I don't agree with homeboy and his crimes, but he had to feed the beast. It was his time. I guess means he had to, the, the gang told him to do something and he did it. These dudes would act on entire families, go into households and wipe the whole family out. Everybody, nobody is safe from what they're gonna do. That's what a lot of these guys were convicted on. A lot of them, like I said in the beginning, had very heinous, heinous, heinous crimes. And then they had to go back when it was over. If they ever got out, they were going to get deported back to where they came from. Or they, a lot of times, had crimes awaiting them there. So you look at it like this. They're given 20, 30 years. If they catch another 20, 30 years in an American prison, that's great. Because they were facing life or 50 years over in El Salvador or over in Mexico. They definitely don't want to get put in the hands of them people, you know what I mean, and they get caught and be in custody over there, so it's nothing for them to run their time up intentionally, looking for a reason to run their time up. You want to run your mouth not knowing that man is looking to kill somebody because he wants to stay here. He wants to stay in American prison. To him, this is sweet. He's going to get deported to a place where they're not passing out uniforms. Whatever pair of jeans you came in in is what you're going to be wearing for the longest time. They're going to a place where people die daily, get hacked up inside their system and left laying on the floor. And the guards are like, I'm not going in there messing with that. That's where they're going. So killing somebody here secures them a spot in like to what they consider Disneyland. And that's why I say when it comes to the gangs, they were by far the most dangerous gang I ran across. I didn't see many Nortenos. That wasn't, that's not really a thing out here. If there were any, and I know there was, I know that for a fact, they were really, really hush-hush about it and would usually try to get to a part of the prison where there weren't a lot of Spanish people. There weren't a lot of Mexicans, El Salvadorians, just anybody. If you spoke Spanish, they wanted to get far away from that section of the prison. They would do something as soon as they got in there intentionally to get moved because these dudes ain't got a lot of ops in there. You know, uh, Serrano's and Ortenos at the time, I don't know if it still is, they were like clashing at full-fledged war. It was bad if they come across an Ortenio. So you didn't want to go into a place where you knew it's most likely going to be all MS-13s. That's a bad look. These dudes would find ways to get up out of there. Like I said, A, they're looking to run their time up. B, they've already committed heinous acts as it is. And C, they're good with knives. Not someone you want to have pressure with. At the end of the day, I'm going to do some more of these. Because there's so many different gangs in the prison. So much you can get into when it comes to them. At the end of the day, here's what I want you to draw from this. That gang lifestyle shit is not cool. Prison sucks. If you end up in prison, you've already done really bad for yourself. It's all bad. Like, what are you doing? But going to prison and joining a gang... Is going to make it that much worse. The most you're going to have to deal with if you're not in the gang is the everyday problems that you run across, situations you put yourself into. The gangs are always in the middle of something. There's constantly something jumping off that's gang related. So look at it like this. If you're not in the gang, then all that stuff over there that's jumping off, nine times out of ten ain't got nothing to do with you. It's not going to affect you in any way. The moment you join the gang, you're right up in the middle of something. Your chances of getting hurt, getting beat up, getting violated, just went through the roof. It's almost 100% guaranteed that if you were a guy that joined the gang because you didn't want to fight or didn't like fighting, it's almost guaranteed that at one point or another, you're going to now have to fight because you're in a gang. So that's what it is, man. The truth on prison gangs. We'll call this volume one. We will do more of these. Once again, 
I hope nobody out there takes any offense. I don't need angry white people in my comment box or angry anybody in my comment box about anything I say. I simply relive it. I give my point of view, my truth, what I know to be true, what I saw. Can't get mad at me for how others carry themselves. And that's just the facts. One more day. One. Uno. Mas. Until. I get to go on vacate. No more work. Damn, that means I'm not going to be in the vehicle like that. I jump here for y'all. But one more day and I get to finally kick back and relax. Need I say, I'm excited. I'm overworked. I'm tired. My body is just taking a toll and beat down. The heat is at just a record high right now. And I'm just over it all. I need a vacation. But anyways, these jails, these prisons, these institutes, these facilities, they're all just crazy worlds inside of a already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. And to all my real ones and the awesome real ones watching, because y'all still watching me. Man, y'all know how we do. Salute. Stay out of trouble.